Hello and welcome to Tutoring with Gavin. In this series of video tutorials, I'll be exploring how to get a great grade in your GCSE English Literature exam. In this video, I'll look at the context for The Sign of Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The context of any literary text can provide important clues about the meaning of a text. We can uncover meaning in this story by understanding more about what was going on around the time it was written in 1890. Doyle was born in 1859 in Edinburgh, Scotland, into a poor family. He had an alcoholic father who had psychiatric problems. He was raised a Catholic, but later rejected the Catholic faith and turned to science, studying medicine at the University of Edinburgh Medical School. While studying, Doyle began writing short stories. In 1882, Doyle set up a medical practice in Southsea near Portsmouth. However, the practice was not successful. So, while waiting for patients, Doyle wrote fiction. Doyle lived during the Victorian era. In the 19th century, the British Empire was the largest empire in history, controlling over 400 million people, almost a quarter of the world's population at that time. Like Sholto and Morstan, Watson served in India as an army surgeon, where he was wounded during the Second Afghan War. The Indian Rebellion of 1857 began with the mutiny of Indian troops under British officers. The rebellion took six months to suppress, with heavy loss of life on both sides. India became the empire's most valuable possession, the jewel in the crown, and was the most important source of Britain's strength. During this period, Britain's population increased at a dramatic rate, accompanied by rapid urbanisation, which caused poverty, poor housing and crime. In sharp contrast, the rich lived relatively grand lives, often from the proceeds of imperialism. Many in the upper classes owned a country mansion and a home in London. The description of Sholto's apartment is evidence of the spoils of imperialism. Two great tiger skins thrown athwart to increase the suggestion of Eastern luxury. The Agra treasure is at the heart of this story and represents a life-changing amount of riches. Doyle is raising two issues here. The theft of treasure from a British colony by those in the upper classes and the idea that wealth does not necessarily mean you will be happy. Class was still a big social divide at the time. Through Dr. Watson and Miss Morstan's developing relationship, Doyle examines what effect it would have on their relationship if she inherited her father's fortune, albeit from immoral gains. Watson assesses that Miss Morstan's impending wealth will make her part of the upper classes and essentially put her out of his league. Wealth then is intimately linked to social status, and social status defines who can fall in love with whom. Holmes seems to have an addiction to cocaine in the story. The India-China opium trade was very important to the British economy. Britain had fought two wars in the mid-19th century known as the Opium Wars in support of free trade against Chinese restrictions, but in reality because of the immense profits to be made in the trading of opium. Since the British captured Calcutta in 1756, the cultivation of poppies for opium had been actively encouraged by the British and the trade formed an important part of India's economy. Dr. Watson would have had access to this drug, which was often used as an anaesthetic during operations. In Oscar Wilde's 1891 novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray, he writes, There were opium dens where one could buy oblivion. Dens of horror where the memory of old sins could be destroyed by the madness of sins that were new. These dens catered mainly for seamen who had become addicted to the drug when overseas. Opium and other narcotic drugs played an important part in Victorian life. Shocking though it might be to us in the 21st century, in Victorian times it was possible to walk into a chemist and buy without prescription laudanum, cocaine and even arsenic. London had a population of nearly a million and a half people in the early 19th century, but was policed by only 450 constables and 4,500 night watchmen. The idea of a professional police force was taken up by Sir Robert Peel when he became Home Secretary in 1822. Peel's Metropolitan Police Act of 1829 established a full-time professional and centrally organised police force for the greater London area known as the Metropolitan Police. In 1842, detective units were established in the Metropolitan Police Force. Two years before the publication of The Sign of Four, there were a spate of horrific murders in East London by Jack the Ripper. Forensic science would have probably led to the capture of this infamous mass murderer. However, the handling of this case by the London CID was woefully inadequate. The murders were never solved and public confidence in the police was damaged. In The Sign of Four, Detective Inspector Jones represents the poorly trained and uneducated detective contrasted with the genius of Sherlock Holmes, a pioneer in forensic science. Doyle made Holmes a man of science and an innovator of forensic methods, inspired by the real-life figure of Joseph Bell, a surgeon at the Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh, whom Doyle met in 1877 and had worked for as a clerk. 
In several instances, Doyle depicted homes using methods years before they were adopted by official police forces in both Britain and America. Doyle was quick to realise the value of fingerprint evidence. Scotland Yard did not begin to use fingerprints until 1901. I hope this has helped in your revision. If you want more ideas about this and other texts being studied in the GCSE literature exam, please be sure to subscribe so that you can get regular notifications of new videos as they're released. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this video and make any comments about any tutorials that would be useful in your own revision. Until next time.